Welcome back to MyJewelryBench.com. Today I'm not going to be discussing how I actually designed this ring, but I am going to talk about how I got the supports for this ring and managed to get it to print perfectly. I just want to discuss that because I know that's an important part of jewelry design. So let's get started. Okay guys, let's get started on this ring. So I took a bunch of time to design this ring for another jeweler who needs it for his customer. It's going to be designed as a wedding band. Um, she wants it to be, you know, this is this is the design she came up with, so we built it out for her. There are some considerations when we're going to work on 3D printing, however. When we go to 3D print this, we're going to have to be conscious of several things. For instance, we have a little gap here, which is going to leave us an island in our slicer, and we're also going to have to deal with some islands on this. Mostly the circles are a problem, so you can see every location where there's a circle, we're going to have to deal with an island, so we're going to have to add some support there to make sure this prints correctly. So doing a test in standard resin, um, I'm going to give this a shot, and I'm also going to print this in iPhone castable, jewelry castable red resin, and I will show you the settings, and we're going to go ahead and do the prints, and I'll give you the results. So let's go take a look at this, what it looks like in sheet two box. So here's the ring in sheet two box, and you can see that it's it's pretty good. We still have to deal with the best way to orient this, and I'm going to print this horizontally. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and start adding my supports. To give you an idea what this ring is supposed to look like when it's done, I'm going to go ahead and do this, uh, give this a render real quick. Okay, so this is the look we're going for, and you can see that uh, I'm shooting for, obviously the customer wants yellow gold, so I tried to render this out in yellow gold and give it a look that uh, looks about as good as possible. And now what I'm going to do is just take this into the slicer, and we're going to start working on it. So let's get back to the slicer. You can see I've already oriented it, and I've got this on the bed, and what I want to do now is add in some medium supports. And I'm going to do the medium supports not just for the uh, the castable resin, but also for the standard resin. And the standard resin is so the customer can, you know, get a feel for what it's going to look like. Uh, let's see. First thing I need to do is um, I have to account for two possible shrinkages. First, we're going to have shrinkage in the resin during the print, and we're also going to have shrinkage in the casting. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to size this up to approximately 109%. So 109, and I'm going to make that clear across the board. That'll give this... Uh, that'll bring up the size just a little bit more significant. We're shooting for just under a 7, so that should bring that up enough. Now let's go to supports, and obviously I'm using sheet 2 box. I'm not crazy about sheet 2 box's uh, standard settings, but we're going to go with medium supports, and I'm going to go ahead and add all. And now that I've added all, now what I want to do is go through and figure out um, the best way to clear these out because I don't want any artifacts left on the prongs. So I'm going to come over here to the minus tool and just start uh, removing some of these uh, supports that are in our way or touching some prongs or something that's going to leave an artifact. I don't want to do that. Okay, that looks okay. I'm not too crazy about this one, so I'm going to get rid of that too. That looks good. Now what I want to do is support this from the inside of the ring where I can manage my artifacts a little bit better and then I can go ahead and deal with those problems later on. So I'm going to come over to the add supports and I'm going to start adding supports in spots where I know I have problems like right here. We know we're going to have a problem there. I mentioned that before and we're going to deal with all of those circles. You've added a support there. Let's just grab another one. Uh, let's get that up there. I can squeeze that one in, and let's get one here, and then one right here. And on the inside, I'm just going to come over and just add in some supports on the inside, just because I can manage those at any time. And this helps my print on the 3D printer so that I'm not dealing with any issues that crop up later on. And on the bottom, let's see, on the bottom I've got some, I don't want this one, we'll get rid of that. I don't want this one in the corner, so we'll get rid of that. 
and that one on the corner and then we'll just go ahead and add in a couple more supports on these rectangle shapes just to make sure that those are covered and that looks pretty good and I'm going to print this on two different monochrome display printers I'm going to use my upgraded EPAX uh, which has the 2k monochrome display on it and I'm going to use my um, frozen sonic mini mono so those should give me some very good results and let's go ahead and get these all sliced up so I'm pretty happy with the way the supports look let's move on so I'm going to come over to figure out which printer I'm going to use with the castable resin and which I'm going to use for the standard resin so I think I'm going to stick with my frozen sonic mini for the castable so I'll come over to settings going to hit that frozen sonic mini here I've got several printers here I'm going to select my iPhone jewelry castable resin under printing settings this is about what I want I may bring this up from 3 to 3. Uh, let's say 3.4 seconds each layer. I'm doing a six layer bottom count at 35 seconds each, which on a mono printer is very good. I'm also doing 0 0.035 and no anti-aliasing. It's bad with jewelry to do anti-aliasing, so uh, we want as much detail as possible. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit slice. This is going to take a little bit of time. Let's get going on that quicker than I thought. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go find my SD card for the Frozen Sonic Mini, which is right here. And let's call this, uh, we'll call this uh, Ring 4. That's fine. I'm going to select that and hit save. And we're going to replace the existing one that's there. Okay, with that done, now I want to select my uh, I want to go to the next printer, which is going to be the Epax X1 upgraded to the, uh, what is it, X1K 2K mono display. I'm going to come over here and grab my settings, come over to Epax. I'm not going to print this in jewelry castable resin, so we're going to grab the standard resin. Uh, let's see here, porcelain like. Oh, let's see, Epax castable, porcelain, water washable. That should work. Um, I thought I had a new setting here. Let's go to profile. Oh, let's see here. Two seconds exposure time, 45 seconds. That's kind of tough. Let's bring this down to 30 seconds for bottom exposure. I'm going to grab this and do six bottom layer counts. I'm also going to print this at 0 0.035. And light on, light off. We'll do one second. Oops, one, one. I'm also going to slow down my retract speed. I'm going to slow that down to, uh, let's say, 80, just to cover myself there. It's going to slow down the print a little bit more, but I will get a better result. And for the advanced settings, again, I don't want anti-aliasing because I want this to have as much detail as possible. And I feel as though with the supports now in place, this is going to print well. So let's go ahead and slice this. Okay, that's done now. I'm going to save this file out to my Epax X1 stick. And again, we're going to select Ring Style 4 and hit Save. Replace that file. It's going to write that out. That and with that done, guys, I'm off to the printers. So we're going to go print these files up and see what they look like. I'll be back. So here you can see I've started my printers, I've got the resin in there, I've got everything set, and they're off and running. We're going to let these run. It's going to take about an hour and uh, I think 18 minutes for this resin print and a little bit longer for the standard printer uh, resin to work because I've got the settings a little bit slower. But we're going to let these run and we'll be back when they're done. So it's been about an hour and a half. I came back and look what I found. Lo and behold, they printed well. That's not too bad. It needs to be cleaned out. Now the iPhone castable jewelry resin should be cleaned out in water or if you're going to put it in ice propyl alcohol, just a little bit. Um, just leave it in there for a couple of minutes, no more than that, and then rinse it in warm water. Um, the standard gray resin, of course, you can rinse that with uh, either water or IPA, whatever your choice is. And it's off to be cleaned. I, uh, I like to clean my printers every time I'm done using them so that everything is fine. I don't like leaving resin in the vat. Just in case there's a little hole in there, you never know. You don't want anything leaking. So I'm not going to bore you with the entire process of me cleaning my printers. But pretty much rest assured that every time I print 
and I am done for the day. I will clean out my printers, clean them with IPA and then some uh, glass cleaner, get them all ready for the next time so that I don't have to deal with it the next time. Just pour my resin in and go. Okay guys, so I've gotten through my printing and what I ended up with is my test piece that the customer is actually going to try on. And you can see that this piece printed really, really nice. And I'm going to get in here and you can see the detail on this print. All the prongs printed good. We've got some little supports there. I probably should have removed those. But uh, for the most part, that printed really well. And this is in oh, Alagu Mars gray resin. I think the water washable resin. So I'm going to go through and clean this up and pull out the supports. Um, before we do that, here is our iFun Jewelry Castable Red Resin. And again, I'll pull off the supports here. And you can see this is a little bit on the translucent side. Um, if Listen, if you work with this castable resin, it does cast well. The one issue that I've seen, um, the gentleman who does my casting, unfortunately, has not been fluxing the... Uh, Get my little dog hair out of here. He has not been fluxing the gold. So when you're burning out your gold or melting your gold, you, you want to make sure you flux it and clean it because any imperfections in there are going to show up. And sadly, uh, we had to have that conversation. So let's get this cleaned up and I'll be back. Okay guys, so I'm back. I cleaned up these prints. I removed the uh, supports. And now let's take a look at the iPhone castable. Now you can see there are some lines in there. Remember this was printed on a frozen Sonic Mini and the iPhone resin printed just wonderful. I mean, I just love the way this stuff prints. And again, if you do a burnout uh, on this at the, I think it's over the course of eight hours, you start at about 700 degrees, bring it up to 800, well, 700 degrees for the first hour and a half, 800 degrees for the next, five and a half hours and then another hour at 700 degrees it burns out really well and when you're going to pour in your uh, gold just make sure you have clean gold and that you've pre-fluxed it so that uh, it flows better because any debris that's left over if you don't burn it out right it's going to show up in your casting obviously however we did one we did a print in elegu mars water washable gray resin and you can see, uh, I wanted to show the detail on this. It's just phenomenal. It just, it's just great. And, and take my word, while you can't see through the translucence the detail in the iPhone resin is just as good as this. Um, it probably would have been a little better had I printed this on my EPAX instead of the Frozen, but uh, it, it came out really good. So let's do the comparison. Pretty happy with this. So far, so good. So you saw the settings. Um, if you didn't see those, go back in the video. I did have them on there. Uh, how I did the support, because remember, we do have some loose islands in here, and I supported it from the inside, printing it horizontal. I hope that helps you guys. Uh, this is a really fun product to make. I did have a lot of fun doing it. And in the newest version of Blender Gems, you'll find each of these particular heads. There's three of them here, and I did three different styles of three. So there's nine new heads to go along in there, plus all the other almost a hundred and something new uh, models I added to Blender Gems this particular month. I hope you like this video, guys. I hope it helped you. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody who's interested, please share this. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button now. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, have a, have a good day and take care.